Okay, hi there, Mark Sazen. Um, we will create now a uh, teddy bear like uh, figure. So, uh, just as a reference, uh, I will not follow this strictly, but just having an idea what we'll do. Uh, all right, so starting here, uh, we'll actually create a very basic sphere. Lightbox is not needed, so just pressing comma, press T to enter edit mode, shift F to see. Uh, the resolution it's not a um, poly mesh model so let me make it a poly mesh switch to basic material and uh, just to have it uh, at hands we will grow and create the floor and import the image uh, as a reference so front and back map should be imported and here we go with a teddy bear all right now it's too much so let me go and hit on adjust and rescale it and using right click to navigate and uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, symmetrical or not it's just mainly a reference and that's how it goes okay maybe yeah it's good all right uh, and we are in mode fill mode 2 that's a little bit stronger all right and shift F to turn off the visibility of the frames now uh, just in general uh, at first uh, pressing X uh, it will turn on symmetry we can press W lift this up scale it up a little bit uh, just to have an idea about a head Probably this should be squeezed and uh, into these directions. Okay, I'm not going crazy right now. The first thing I want to do is um, create a kind of a rough assembly. So uh, in addition, we will go to Subtool and I will rename it right away to Head. Head, and this is nothing special here. It's just uh, basically the, the body. Uh, will be built up from various spheres and other things. Let me duplicate this and go with uh, body. So these are meshes, not uh, any type of specialties. Uh, uh, no Dynamesh or uh, nothing else yet. Maybe uh, this should be a little bit canted and pushed back aside. Okay, I like it a lot. Now, what else do we need? Yeah, we need some kind of an arm, ears, etc. Uh, uh, to to try to follow the structure of the figure. Now, how to do it? So, I'm not sculpting yet. And uh, I will try to keep it as simple as possible until I reach a point where I have uh, most of the tools, most of the things uh, laying around. Uh, now, so that will be the body, but how to deal with the arms? So I will just go and insert and create a new sphere 3D and uh, let me drag this away, shift F, this is how it looks and I can press Ctrl W just to change the polygon colors, so Ctrl W that helps a lot. Let me rescale it a little bit and move it to the shoulder. So I'm lifting this up, rotating this slightly and uh, even scale it further and push it in until I reach the point where, you know, it's just... All right, that's where that's the insertion point of the arm. Maybe a little bit back, or yeah, somewhere there. Okay, so I want to start from here. But uh, here comes a good question now: How to extend this arm uh, in length and keep this round ball point like joint? Um, there is a modifier uh, called the the uh, where you are extender. So extender can actually create some funny things. Okay, so it's quite a handy thing to do. Now it extends in all directions. Uh, we can actually change this a little bit. So if we want to increase the back end, well, that should be fine. Maybe I'll switch to move back. Uh, and I'm pressing W, and it's once I'm using these uh, modifiers, I can spa uh, press W and switching back and forth between modifiers and the. Uh, transform itself and move it further okay now this is a little bit tightly bonded to the body which I don't care that much at the beginning but 
later on I have to focus on a little bit more. Now to uh, rotate these uh, a little bit outwards, I will hold down Alt key and use this drag. And now when I'm holding Alt, I can move the gizmo itself. And then I can lift this up a little bit more. And I will uh, manipulate the body as well. But uh, in general, I'm satisfied. Maybe switching back a little bit to the uh, to the gizmo. So where we are to extender, uh, but it was already uh, committed. So there we are. All right, I will leave it as it is. Okay. Now to move further, what you have to know of. So once extender is done, once adjustments are done. You have to know that these are pretty elongated polygons, so you can't really sculpt on these. Now, to manage that, we can actually just jump in. We can use zero measure, or in this case, it's quite easy if we are just going with uh, with uh, any type of things like uh, DynaMesh. But before I do that, I will duplicate it, rename it to arm, arms and uh, duplicates and uh, that will be uh, legs and just switch to move again and uh, rotate it and move it into position and probably I need to scale it up so I will just use a, an overall scale and along the length I will just shrink it down and uh, it was too much, so let me just dial this down. Okay, and just lift this up. All right, that's good. Looks good. Okay, maybe a little bit more, and stretch it. Yeah. All right. No, it's 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 fun. Okay. Uh, so what's next? Uh, if we want to actually sculpt on these. Um, and uh, go further, adding some details like um, you know elbows and other things. We can and we should use geometry and DynaMesh. And uh, 128 um, should be a little bit low in this case, but let me guess. No, because of the size, it was okay. So we'll keep it as it is now. And um, just to create a, the shape or the overall shape for this. A little guy, I can use a another modifier, so that could be the former, and uh, the former just to create kind of a bend for the elbow. So I'm holding down Control, using not mask pen but mask lasso. So I'm holding Control and Alt, and I can select the areas I want to affect, and those are the areas. Pushing this uh, Control drag, Control and Alt moving these a little bit back so now we have kind of an angle uh, actually I like the idea to control track and select the bottom parts rotate them slightly moving them a little bit up and maybe maybe moving them a little bit closer to the center so now we have this kind of a rounded shape okay looks good so we can press uh, the gear icon where you are and accept the changes okay and uh, to duplicate it uh, what we should do is just go up to Z plugin and use the subtool master and mirror and now we have this dynamashed things so if we are sculpting on it like a B, um, uh, V brush and X, don't forget, turn on symmetry, we have this now, and it's refreshing, so it's working fine, okay, let me undo this, great, here we are with the arms, uh, we can actually, we uh, do this same process, so DynaMesh is there, um, maybe uh, we can just drag this a little bit, and uh, just manually smooth it out, shift F, and just push it a little bit more in, well, it's not that super duper accurate, but we're doing this. Uh, we can actually just uh, use a kind of a tapering effect by dragging the shoulders a bit manually. You can do it in many ways. You can do it with a deformer if you wish. Probably it's nicer with a deformer, so let me try that. Uh, w and uh, gear icon, and we have taper. 
And uh, let me see what taper does here. Yeah, kind of a nice taper going around. All right, uh, we can also add some arcs or we can add band curve. So let me go there, accept this and use a different modifier called band curve. And now we have only two points. So probably we should increase the number of points. Uh, in this direction is okay. Uh, the amount of points should be about maybe well, two, three is enough. So this one is adjusting the number of points, curve resolution. So I can select this and actually start dragging in a screen space, which one is good. I like this. Okay, uh, the body is not really shaped yet, so it's time to focus on the body as well. But before I do that, I will create other items uh, just to have the overall uh, structure of the figure. So I'm happy with the results, so I'll go with uh, Accept and uh, make the same mirror thing, like the Z plugin and a mirror. So let me hit OK. And as always, it's a Dynamesh again. All right, uh, the hat is uh, a neutral hat. There's no crazy thing about this. I'm working, it's not in perspective. In perspective, it looks a little bit different. Uh, I'm just uh, keeping it uh, autographic just to have a, a better view and a reference. Uh, now, how to create the ears? This is a little bit different in an approach. So first of all, um, I will go and start a new model. So besides, uh, it's a little bit easier to manage if you start outside of your main model. I Here I have this arms model and the number four. Now I have this ring 3D and I will just uh, rotate and move it into position. So rotate and holding down shift to accurately rotate. And lift this guy up and uh, uh, we, we still can initialize it, but I'm afraid when I start uh, with the initialize and uh, adjusting the radius, it will snap back. Okay, it happens. Let me know if it on Z. Align Z will do better. So align Z will actually uh, match the things a little bit more. Uh, if I'm holding Alt key and clicking on this icon here, it will snap back to the original. And I guess the ratio is somewhat closer let me reduce the radius uh, let me reduce the overall scale no scale should be okay all right now I will leave it as it is check the resolution resolution looks okay shift F and now make a polymash 3d model of it shift F now we have a color and now W and move it uh, to the position and uh, rescale it to fit as an ear, all right. So we have a donut chip like this, and the next thing is um, the inside of it. So we have this outer rim, this nice little donut, but we want to create a sphere, and it's not a new model. I will insert the model because I want to be in uh, the same place uh, as the uh, donut kind of shape. So insert and uh, sphere 3D. Now we have this one, right? So let me zoom in, lift this guy up, and lift this, and move it in position, and scale it down. And I will use it as a kind of filler. Okay, so let me just find the center, flatten it down a little bit, and actually I will use a scale to scale it up to make it make it kind of a nice curvy thing that relatively well follows the overall structure so let me see that maybe flatten a little bit more all right so uh, yeah now we have an inside and have an outside for the ear which was looking good okay it's okay with me now how to make it one single mesh and how to kind of polish this area so first of all, what I will do is uh, selecting the top one, and we have merge and merge down, and it will merge the two elements into one. So now it will become one subtool. But this merging is not welding or anything. We still have an overlap, but these are just not two individual subtools. Now this is becoming one. So it was merge, merge down, 
Uh, there was only two elements, and merge down is a step, one step down, one step down. So if you have multiple elements, you may want to reply this uh, and repeat. A merge visible will generate a complete new model for you, which one could be good in many cases. Uh, but uh, that way you will keep the original models and a new uh, mesh will appear on your palette. But here, once it is merged, we can use the power of uh, Dynamesh. And uh, if we hit Dynamesh, Dynamesh will remove any internal overlaps. So now it's welded fully. And uh, actually, it's just too low in resolution, so I will increase it to um, 200 and 56 and Dynamesh and now it's it's much better if we want we can actually use uh, the deformation and polish not polish by groups but I will use just simply polish and see if on the south okay it's nice right and again later on we can always repair this back area with a smooth brush or anything I will keep it as it is and actually rename this guy to ears and now, once we have this created separately, a little bit easier, we don't have to worry about that much of the head. We'll go back to the original model, uh, looking with the number, arms, let me select that, and go to insert, where you are, insert, where you are, and insert ears, and good. You can press W, and move it a little bit closer, a little bit tighter here. We can actually rotate this guy around. All right, so not scaling, but rotating a little bit. Okay, going perspective always helps. And uh, guess what? A little bit higher. Okay, that's it. Right, and of course, we want to make it a doubled mirrored version. We hit OK and X to turn on symmetry. And uh, if you want to work locally, local symmetry is a good friend. So usually it should be turned on. So if we are moving things around or scaling things around, uh, we can always use that. We can have that as an advantage. All right. So basically that's what we did. We, we actually combined the two elements by using merge down. And then once those were merged, we were using the Dynamesh function and the uh, uh, then we can use a mirror, whatever uh, it, it's needed. Okay, now how to deal with uh, um, deal with the uh, face, for example. Of course, we have to have uh, the eyes. But before we do the eyes, maybe I will do some very basic sculpting on this. Uh, not much, but just uh, kind of a face thing. So let me hit Alt and uh, go to um, uh, Draw Mode. And it's not a Dynamesh yet, so I will just uh, turn on Dynamesh. Probably it will be low, 256 Dynamesh. It's just too much. We don't need that resolution of Dynamesh, so I will just undo this. And uh, maybe it was one more step undo. Okay, scale. And Dynamesh it now. All right, it's still good enough. Right, Dynamesh is um, size relevant. Okay, so size and, and details. So just because you see a number and that number was good on something, it doesn't mean it will be good for everything else. So for this case, it, it's enough to have that resolution. But for this case, for example, the ears, let me select the ears. If I press the letter N, I can click on the ears and rename them properly, ears. And as you see, it, it, it requires a little bit more resolution because we want to keep this uh, transition between the two shapes. But um, but that's the reason mainly. So when you are using this technique at the beginning, you can use separate resolutions uh, with no, no further issues. All right, Shift F and um, use this a little bit of uh, to, to scale things and just generate some kind of a basic shape or just a kind of face or direction that points all right depending on the goals maybe this should be pushed a little bit further ok 
okay with the cheeks right it's hard to harder to smooth if you have uh, a higher resolution uh, but uh, it's it's up to you so you can start with an even lower dynamesh and then increase it further or make these fine tunes once we have the z remeshed model okay so uh we will combine later on these but right now uh, i want to create a couple spheres for eyes nose and uh, the mouth part so insert and uh, sphere 3d and uh yeah we can create a belly patch uh, like this uh good and resize this guy and pull it out rotate it and i like to keep that uh, just because uh, it could be great for an eyeball and if we don't want to paint it or the paint is relatively simple it's easy to use the poles shift one okay so eyes one eyeball or button we can actually flatten this a little bit to make it more believable and later on we can sculpt on the face but right now i just want to double it so z plug in and uh, make a mirror and now we have two of these okay which one i like uh x don't forget to turn on symmetry local symmetry is already on so we don't have to worry about that much okay now we need another sphere just to create this uh, kind of patch for the nose uh, now to do it insert oh, where are you insert and uh, sphere 3d and lift this up and uh, i will not rotate or anything like that because it's mostly used for sculpting squash it a bit more uh maybe rotate slightly upwards right so these are very very minor tweaks uh and uh, but they can they can speed up the work a lot all right it may be per not perfect at the beginning but the more you see of of the possible outcome of the model the easier the decision becomes okay uh i will just duplicate it this time and uh move it away and scale it down to create a nose okay nothing nothing crazy slight more rotation uh leave it as it is okay here we go all and tapping on a model pressing q shift f to see the actual resolution and because i want to carve in the mouth details uh we'll go and use dynamash again uh it's not that detailed for this so i will increase the resolution because when you are using cutting tools like damp standard this won't make any good uh and uh especially when you're using dynamesh and damp standard you have to have kind of relatively high resolution uh not, you know you can go through the thousands sometimes uh depending on the job b uh ds to damp standard and start cutting it we don't have symmetry on so don't forget to turn on symmetry and uh, maybe something like that And clean this up by using some smooth and just maybe the the overall size is too much and the intensity is too much so i want to have more control over it and that's it that's how it goes nice maybe in the corner of the mouth a little bit more and using some smoothing using some touch-ups okay good so as a base here we go um it's not that happy but he is there um and i like it this way so we have this kind of a little bit of a map piece all right um yeah we we need to work on uh on the rest of the body uh but what uh but what else what happens if we want to create some kind of a uh, leg uh, toes 
or if we want to combine an existing uh, area. So how to do it. Uh, basically, I will not completely model the whole thing. Uh, I just wanted to show some general ideas. That start with a primitive, use initialize, use the basic deformers, um, use the basic transformations, scaling, whatever. Then you can quickly turn it into a Dynamesh and uh, start modeling on it. Uh, if you have to combine two elements, you can use the merge down option. And once these are merged, you can use Dynamesh again, and Dynamesh will delt them. Uh, but before you are going crazy about that, please check with Shift F what Dynamesh does. So is it okay or not? Uh, if it's not okay, you can always go back uh, with with the uh, slider. So use that as an advantage. Okay. Now, what happens if you want to combine, uh, for example, the head and the ears? What to do? So, first of all, it's always a good idea to save. So, I can press number 9 to save uh, as a quick save. Now, we have a stage uh, that's saved. In a subtle area, we have the head and we have ears somewhere. I will select the ears and hold down the shift key and tap it on this arrow. And it will just place the arrow at the very uh, the ears at the very top, and now we have ears and head all together. Now I'm holding down Shift key and clicking on the eye icon. Everything will be visible. I will just keep and turn back on visibility of the, these two uh, because I want to combine them. Now to use it, uh, I'll, I'll do this. Uh, I have already a quick save option, so I'm not worried about that much. But if you are starting to Valding things together and you have plenty of things to be valid like toes nails whatever then you have to uh, it's a good idea to save uh, uh, completely the project I will use merge now and uh, it's not a dynamesh anymore but it caps and it remembers the dynamesh structure so my goal here is actually blend these a little bit better but it's this mesh is still not capable to do it so if you want uh, to do it uh, I can uh, we can do many things. We can use Dynamesh again, but uh, when we are using Dynamesh again, uh, you have to know of that this is actually it will it will cut things through. Okay, so uh, not cutting things, but it will weld all the things together. Which one is actually good for us? So let me hit Dynamesh, and now. I can use smooth or the BCL clay brush and create the transitions. So using smooth and, and making the transitions. All right, a little bit more, you know, more, more freedom. Okay, so we have symmetry on. Sorry, I wanted to use smooth. Now it's harder to use smooth. Uh, in general, I like to create this very basic transition at the beginning, and I will show just a second what we can do further. Uh, you don't even need to use the clay brush that much. Uh, uh, just uh, having a basic smooth around, because because we can actually. Uh, convert this model. Now let me show you how. So subtool we have now this ears model. Uh, I will rename it to head, head and dyna mesh and duplicate it uh, in order to in order to make it a little bit easier duplicate and that will be the head and uh, Z remesh And turn off the visibility of the first one, shift F to see it. Um, and we are going to geometry and Z measure. Now we have this very important value. We can actually try to keep the groups, uh, which one is uh, not that bad, but here, honestly, um, so this back area should be belong to that first part. So what I can do is holding down Control and Shift. Now we have these polygroups selected. So I uh, will actually hold down Control, uh, Control, and uh, 
mask this. So mask last cell is used, control mask this area. So now we have that separated with a mask. I'm pressing on W and now it has a new polygon group. The reason I do this is because uh, my goal is to valve this group with that one. Let me turn off the line and now it's easier to see what's going on here. Uh, what I did, let me show it with a magnifier. So here you have line and fill. And sometimes these are hard to see and the lines, especially if you are using dense Dynamesh, can be a little bit messy. So this is why I do this. Uh, so my goal here is to hide away what I don't want. Control shift and uh, tap on this model, invert, and control shift and alt and tap on this inside. Now control W to have this as a group. Now everything is visible. Control shift and tap. And good. So now when we are using zero measure, we can turn on keep groups. And uh, it will smooth the groups a little bit which one uh, is fine for now for me probably it will remove some of the edges around and the target groups should be about two it's just the hat so we don't need to go crazy and symmetry should be turned on which one is turned on so let me hit zero measure it takes some time uh, by the way uh, the lower this count Usually, uh, at the beginning, usually it generates a little bit cleaner mesh. And, but if you're not satisfied, you can always uh, do it again. Uh, or sometimes uh, recalculating with Dynamesh and then do it again will give you somewhat different results. Uh, and if you're uh, more advanced, you may want to use uh, zero measure guidelines. Or, in my experience, uh, if you just want to get a clean mesh without too much hustle, you can use the decimation master to decimate the model first and then use your measure. But uh, it's mostly for uh, difficult things. All right, so here we are. This is our base mesh, which was good. Now we have no uh, resolution. Uh, levels we have no subdivision levels as you see uh, if we want to smooth it out we can press ctrl D and now we have one level we can walk up and down so ctrl D again and because we were using uh, uh, the zero measure and let me show the active points so active points is supposed oh, to freely low ctrl D again and now we can start sculpting on a model uh, let me turn back on the eyes and turn back on the nose area now. So once you have uh, a model like this, what's the advantage? Why we used the zero measure? So we can paint and we can actually start like the BST, the standard brush. Uh, we can start sculpting some rows, for example, in this case. Or, uh, but the problem is, for example, smoothing is not working that easily so what I could do is uh, I can use uh, I can use a smooth on the lower level so I can uh, for example I can use uh, shift D to walk down and smooth here and it's drastical and I press D and now it is much more tuned uh, if I have some kind of a mesh error here around I can use that and smooth that at the higher level at the higher resolution and now we have a kind of a nice blend. Okay, so that's uh, what it's all about. I can switch to a BMV, move brush, and just push it in this area a little bit more to have some room for the, for the eyes, for example. So we can again select the eyeballs, press W, and uh, move them in. Uh, if we want to unlock the symmetries on, we can, we can play in the shape of the eyes. Uh, scale it up uh, according to the needs. Maybe if we have the shape changed, we can play the angle with the ovality. So that's that's basically up to you. Now this one is paintable. Uh, everything is basically paintable in ZBrush, uh, but because we have used zero measure and it's uniform, 
the uh, the mesh looks pretty nice. Let me show this. So the, the polygon sizes shift D and walking down are fairly even. It's really easy to paint uh, with the painting tools. All right, shift F. So that's how it goes uh, from uh, head to toe. So you can create uh, fingers like uh, using the extender for the fingers or just stretching out a sphere or you know the extender is a really good tool for uh, basic shapes especially this capsule like shape and capsules could be very good for fingers body whatever um, but the list is going on and on all right um, let me see and let me show the whole thing all right so that's just really a draft but uh, you can go anywhere from here all right thank you very much i hope you find it helpful and see you next time goodbye